Today, we're going to break down this week's trades and my $1,000 challenge and talk about the performance. And then later in this video, I'm going to reveal the secrets in this trading strategy. I'll be sharing the specific rules that are driving the algorithm and hopefully give you some inspiration for rules in your own trading strategies. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. I trade algos and cryptos, which is a high risk way to invest. You must do your own research and thoroughly backtest any strategy before running live as you could lose all your money. Let's dive in. So the strategy has been running for a week now and we've generated six signals. We've got three buyers and three sells. Here's my sub account in Binance. You can see we're sitting on 1,053 Tether plus a bit of change after starting with $1,000, so we're in the green. This strategy trades specifically on the Solana Tether currency pair. I do have some other strategies running on other token pairs. I'll talk about them in a later video. At this stage, I'm not saying Solana is better or worse than any other currency. It's a good project, but for this challenge, all I wanted was a token that was fairly closely linked to Bitcoin with a slightly higher volatility, so hopefully we can catch some nice big swings up and down along the way. We kicked off the week by buying in at $98.31, and unfortunately, the price dipped almost straight away, triggering our stop loss on Sunday night, kicking us off with a 10% loss to the start of the week. You would have seen in the news this week, it's been dominated by the Bitcoin ETF approvals. Clearly, we had some big movements earlier in the week in the build-up to the announcement. There's been all kinds of speculation about why. Were the institutions trying to shake out retail investors before the launch? Or did someone have some inside information about the ETF pre-sales? I'm not the kind of guy to start walking around with tinfoil hats on my head, so I'm not going to speculate too much. We then had the mess of the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, where a tweet was tweeted from their ex account that the ETF approvals had been given, when they actually hadn't been. They then immediately retracted that message saying that their account had been hacked. Again, I'm not going to spend any time speculating on why and fueling conspiracy theories. What we do need to understand, however, is the knock-on impact to the market. Bitcoin's price rocketed up upon the initial news and then plummeted back down when the retraction came in, dragging the whole market up and down with it. Volatility can be dangerous without the right strategies in place. Remember, the whole point of algorithmic trading is to be able to trade without emotion. When the price shoots up, people either FOMO and start piling on, or they panic about when to take their profits. We didn't need to because our rules kicked in and we made a nice gain after the price settled down at the end of the mess. We sold at 99.5 and we had a 12% gain on that trade. And then when the approvals were given, the price didn't actually explode, which is what some people expected. And the hype quickly died down when people realized that all these institutions probably would have pre-bought a lot of their Bitcoin and most of them would be trading OTC rather than what some people thought which was that billions would suddenly be flowing into the market on day one and drive the price up straight away. The way that a fund works is that all the orders that investors are putting in to buy into the fund or to take their money out of the fund will get totted up throughout the day and then they'll work out the net inflow or outflow and that's the amount that will get traded on the market the following business day by the institution's traders. The investor doesn't actually find out what their entry price is going to be until two days after they've put in the order. The traders are going to be trading OTC or they're going to be using strategies to hide the size of their orders in the market. So you're not just going to get these massive floods of price movement. Sorry, that's that's not how it works. So after things quietened down a little on Wednesday morning, our algorithm bought back in again at $94. And then we sold again on Thursday night when the price was retracing for a nice 5% gain. So overall, we've had quite a volatile week with some big swings, but the price ultimately has finished not far from where it started. And we've netted about 7% along the way. So that's not bad. So what's going on under the bonnet of this strategy then? Well, I promised I'd start to reveal the secrets this week. So here we go. All my strategies are built on Arrow Algo. It's completely free to set up an account. You can build algorithmic strategies without needing to know how to write code. You plug it into your exchange with an API. I'm releasing some videos on how to do this later. It's so easy, so go and check them out. It's a bit like MetaTrader, but it's much easier to use in my opinion. I'll leave a link in the description below. So at a high level, as you can see here, this strategy is four buy blocks and six sell blocks. So that's four different sets of conditions that could be present, which could trigger a signal to enter the market, and six sets of conditions that, if true, would trigger a signal to exit the market. We've got more sells than buys because clearly risk management is important. We need rules to make sure that we're both taking profits when we're up and preventing losses when the market's falling. Today we're going to deep dive into the first set of buy conditions. So the first one you can see here specifically has four conditions. And from this double equal sign here, we're specifying that all four of these conditions need to be met in order to trigger a signal. If they are, then using this math block, we're setting a buy value within a clamp and we're feeding this buy value into the buy block. So the clamp value is 100. I could have set a range, but you can see here I've set the minimum max, both was 100. And the buy block is set to read the value as a percentage rather than a fixed amount. So we're buying long on the pair for 100% of the value of the account. We started with 1,000 tethers, so our first trade would have bought 1,000 tethers worth of Solana. If I change this input as a percentage field from true to false, then this would have tried to buy 100 tokens, which is more than we can afford in our challenge. So let's leave it as a percentage. So the first of these four conditions is here. You can trace the connection back to this condition block with an or symbol. 
which is this double line here, as opposed to an AND or any other condition. And this OR block has another five conditions within that. So essentially we're saying that if any one of these five things are true, then we're going to say that this condition has been met. Now this setup looks complicated, but in simple terms, what we're trying to achieve here is to check whether over any of the last five days has the low point of the daily price candle dropped below the lower daily Bollinger Band. If you need a refresher on Bollinger Bands, then go and check out my Bollinger Band video. I'll break down how they work and why someone would use them. So you can see here we've got two data watcher blocks one looking at the daily low price and one looking at the daily closing price. The closing price is feeding the Bollinger Band indicator block so it can calculate the values and we've got it set to the lower Bollinger Band level. We're then feeding both the low price and the low band figure into these lag blocks, which means that we're essentially making this comparison one day ago, two days ago, three days ago, and so on. And we're checking whether one is higher or lower than the other on any particular day. So when you put it all together, you can see that we're checking over the last five days has the low point of the daily price candle dropped below the lower daily Bollinger Band. The second rule checks out today's closing price and whether it's finished above the lower Bollinger Band. So we're looking for a sign that the price has bottomed out by way of dropping below the band and then on the rise back up because it's now closed above this lower line. Similar to the above, it's just a condition block comparing the daily close price to the lower Bollinger Band price. But we're looking at today, so there's no lag blocks needed. For the third and fourth rule, we're looking for some kind of validation that we have favorable market conditions, i.e. that we are in an uptrend to go along with our Bollinger Band price action. So we're going to use on balance volume to check that there's momentum in the market and there are some generally bullish conditions. For those that are unsure about on balance volume, I released a video on that last week explaining how it works and why I would use it. So go and check it out and come back if you need to. OBV needs two inputs for the calculation, one with the closing price and one with the trading volume. So the first rule quite simply looks at whether OBV is currently higher than its 10 day moving average. The last one is looking at the difference between OBV and its 5 day moving average and whether this difference is more than 1%. Both of these would indicate that OBV is moving in the right direction and that not only is the price showing favorable action around the Bollinger Bands, but there's momentum behind the general trend as well. So that's the first set of buy conditions. If all four conditions are met, then we're going to generate a buy signal and we're going to enter the market. Some of you would have noticed that these only look at daily prices and set daily rules. My other rules would generally have have a shorter term focus and they'll be built around 15 minute and hourly prices and indicators so we'll look at some of those next time i'll be looking forward to that hopefully you found this interesting give us a like and a subscribe if so and go and check out the software if you register using the invitation code first 100 you'll get a thousand dollars in free credits in the meantime stay safe happy trading and see you next time